Hey team, Andre from High Performance Academy here. Welcome to another one of our webinars. Before we get into that though, I'll just bring you up to speed on what's been going on over the last couple of weeks. Let's start with our latest giveaway and we have partnered this time with Haltech. We'll jump to our overhead camera here and we have Haltech's latest and greatest R Nexus R3, which is a recent release from Haltech. It is the smaller brother, I guess, to the R5, which has been around for a little while. Nice thing with the R3 and the R5 is that they are uh, a complete vehicle control unit. So not only have you got a very full-featured ECU, which includes uh, half-ridge controllers or half-ridge outputs, I should say, for dual drive-by-wire motors. If you're running two, it'll handle them. Uh, it's also got a built-in PDM or power distribution module. Now, it is a little bit pared down, particularly on the R3. It's not really designed to run your entire car electronics, but it's absolutely up to the task of supplying all of the power requirements for everything that's operating with your engine. It's also got onboard Lambda control as well and a fully featured data logger, so it is a really sophisticated piece of kit. On top of this, we are also including our VIP deal, which is access to every single course we currently offer. We've got plenty of health tech content in our practical standalone tuning course as well as that we're also as well as our VIP deal offering all of the courses we already give you uh, you're going to get free access to any course we ever produce in the future so you'll never pay for another course in your life you also get lifetime access to our uh, private online members only forum as well perfect place to get reliable trustworthy answers to your specific questions so if we jump across to my laptop screen uh, there is a link that the team will drop into the chat you can follow that'll get you here uh, this has only recently gone live there's 25 days left for this giveaway total prize value five thousand us dollars actually a little bit over five thousand us dollars absolutely no uh, requirement for purchase to get involved you can enter with your email address you can enter with your facebook account so click that link get your name into the draw it is a great deal we will ship this free of charge to your door regardless whereabouts in the world uh, you live so no reason not to get involved. Now, I just realized I haven't actually opened my little pictures that I wanted to go through. So just give me a second while I get these all up and uh, ready. And I want to take you through uh, a race meeting that uh, Ben and I went through on the weekend. Right, let's jump across to my laptop screen. Uh, so we had the last round of the sprint series run at Highlands Motorsport Park, our local racetrack. So this is run on on a shorter version of the track which is referred to as A and C. So this is out a bunch of the track but it's actually a really cool, really interesting uh, little circuit. And for the first time in a long time we actually had both cars running our SR86 as well as our Honda CRX. The Honda CRX has been having more than a few problems with gearbox reliability and it took a fair while to get uh, a fresh gearbox built up. This is still the factory Honda based 6 speed box although it does use a close ratio gear set. When we purchased the car the box was a little bit tired and a little bit worn and that kind of resulted in a few niggly problems that just kept presenting each time we raced it. So this was the opportunity to go through and basically refresh everything that was a little tired and a little worn. Uh, the competition in my particular class was pretty wild actually there was a Lamborghini Gallardo GT3 car uh, a variety of Porsches of different different uh, generations so that kept it pretty interesting uh, this particular one run by Carter's tyre service uh, ended up being uh, my main competition in the racing uh, also just to uh, keep things a little bit interesting there was a Ford RS200 uh, genuine Ford RS200 this was actually running in a different class but it's a pretty cool car uh, one of my personal favourites and it's not too often you stumble across a genuine RS200. This one is owned by Tony Quinn who actually owns Highlands Motorsport Park. He is running this in Modern Classics and uh, we'll revisit Tony in a moment. This car is actually pretty heavily modified. Uh, you know, a, a standard RS200 wasn't quite enough so this one has got a sequential gearbox, a bigger turbo, a Motec electronics suite and it is reported to produce a around about 700 horsepower uh, when it's basically set on high boost. Uh, 
the track, particularly in the mornings, was pretty cold. So we did take the opportunity to use tyre warmers. Uh, given that it is only a sprint race that's uh, six laps long, it doesn't really give you a lot, a lot of opportunity to uh, build up heat into the tyres. You basically get a formation lap and then uh, you are coming out to the grid for a, a rolling start. So not a lot of chance on that short track to get temperature into the tyres, particularly when uh, air temperature in the morning is probably somewhere in the region of about 5 or 6 degrees C. So uh, took opportunity to use the tyre warmers and that definitely helped have the confidence that the tyres and the grip, more importantly, were going to be there right from the outlap. Uh, so again, my competition here, mainly uh, Porsches, which wasn't a bad place to be. Uh, first race, uh, I managed to qualify on pole, but uh, that was more of a case of the Porsche that's seen in this picture. Uh, unfortunately, had an ABS issue. Well, unfortunately for him, maybe fortunately for me, had an ABS issue and practice in quali, and uh, that meant he qualified P3. So it's a little bit off the pace. Uh, they managed to fix it for the race, which was not entirely awesome for me. So basically ended up spending four laps uh, looking in my rear view mirrors and my side mirrors more than I was looking forward, uh, trying to defend and basically hold off a car that ended up being a full second a lap faster than me. The end result was a bit of a foregone conclusion, but I did get my own back in race two. There were four races over the weekend. Uh, race two, he actually had a throttle blipper issue for the sequential gearbox and um, basically ended up slowing down quite a bit. So I got back past and managed to get first place in that race uh, and in our final race which was a 30 minute reverse grid race I actually ended up having a little bit of contact with Tony Quinn who as I mentioned owns the track this time not in the RS200 he was racing uh, an older spec Aston Martin GT3 car uh, as you can see here um, he got off really lightly uh, with a little bit of a scuff to the rear bumper and a little bit of paint taken off a wheel uh, the poor old 86 came off a little bit second best but mainly because that front front bar arrangement that you can sort of see that's damaged there is an aftermarket one that we've made in-house and it's pretty thin just made out of fiberglass so obviously doesn't quite have uh, the structural integrity. I uh, did have a couple little videos that I wanted to show here. We'll start with this one. So uh, that reverse grid race I'd come from winning the previous race so I started uh, dead last which was P11 in my class and uh, had a little bit of work to do to get through the field. Uh, in that race I ended up spending uh, four or five, I think it was, five of the six laps trying to find a way past that Aston Martin GT3, which despite being older is actually no slouch in a straight line. Uh, I'll just show you this little clip here. So uh, this is, I think, my second to last lap here. Uh, so let's come past the start finish line and we're going into turn one, which is a right hand corner, obviously the Aston there. We'll just play this. It's running a really defensive line, which means that I got a better run out of the corner and basically tucked it up the inside here coming into this left-hand carousel. Managed to get right up to his B pillar, at which point I quickly realised that he actually wasn't going to give me racing room. So I sort of backpedaled a little bit, managed to back out of it, but didn't quite get clear of him, which is why we sort of ended up making contact uh, around about that rear wheel. So very, very minor damage, and actually that race would be probably the highlight of the racing I've done uh, to date. Tony was driving super defensively, making it really, really difficult uh, to get past that Aston Martin is wide enough, and it's own right without it being placed exactly where I wanted to pass under brakes. Uh, the 8.6, it's always a case of basically seeing where the various strengths and weaknesses of the cars are. Uh, the 8.6 was a little bit faster in a straight line and ultimately I got past him using push to pass out of our forest hairpin. It was a long run down to uh, the bridge so I managed to get past him there but uh, basically the Aston is not too much slower in a straight line uh, but is definitely not as good under brakes and potentially not quite as good through the corners so it's a case of uh, trying to maximise where the 8.6 is strong and uh, and get past, which I did. Uh, ended up running out of laps in order to get up into second place. I think I uh, managed to come third in that race by about a metre, which is a bit of a shame. I thought I actually had one lap left. It wasn't all plain sailing other than the slight amount of damage that you've already seen. Uh, in that last race, uh, about halfway through, there was a... Uh, 
sorry, I'm talking about two different races. The last race is a 30 minute race and they purposely bring in a safety car around about the halfway point. The idea there is just to regroup the field and give people a bit of a chance of getting used to safety car restarts. And at that point I was running second in class or second overall I should say and uh, we'd done a bit of passing. So I actually had Ben, my business partner in the CRX directly behind me and on the safety car restart, uh, basically go across the start finish line and immediately into that right hand turn one which you just saw in that video and as I'm breaking into that corner uh, next thing I know I'm facing the way I'd come off in the grass on the inside of the corner and that's because Ben managed to hit me which is unbelievable at this point but uh, never mind I managed to recover and got back up to second place fortunately had enough laps left to get the job done but uh, certainly not an ideal outcome fortunately uh, damage on both cars was relatively minor. Uh, now the other element that uh, was a little bit unusual is that the about halfway through the races so probably the end of race two we noticed that uh, there was a little bit of a squealing noise coming from the release bearing and um, the release bearing for those who, who aren't aware that's essentially what drives against the clutch plate clutch pressure plate to dis engage the clutch so you can engage uh, first gear. Uh, with the Hollinger paddle shifted box that we use, the clutch actually isn't used on track at all. All the upshifts and downshifts are completely clutchless but of course we're still using the clutch to get out of the pits and uh, once we form up on grid to actually get moving on the uh, the, the formation lap. So uh, the, the release bearing was a little bit of a worry. It started out a little bit noisy uh, after the second to last race. Uh, it was also noticeably creating noticeably creating a lot of drag because when I put my foot on the clutch uh, the engine would actually try and stall. Uh, so I got through the last race and it actually completely failed because we couldn't even disengage the clutch to get it onto the uh, the trailer but this is what uh, we're sort of left with here if we jump across to my laptop screen. Uh, the whole thing has uh, completely disintegrated. Looks like it's also seen uh, a fairly large amount of heat. Uh, the pressure plate that this contacts of course uh, wasn't in exactly premium condition either so a little bit of work to do there. That release bearing's been in the car for probably three years now but like I say it doesn't really actually get a lot of use so a, a little bit surprising. Uh, now I wanted to cover one of the updates that is coming for the 8.6 and I'm really excited about testing this out. Uh, we have got a Bosch Motorsport M5 ABS unit uh, so I'll get this under our overhead uh, so this is the actual ABS pump itself and um, I haven't actually figured out how much complexity is going to be involved in fitting this to the 8.6 at the moment but uh, on face value the pump design is actually very similar to what's already in the 8.6 so we're hoping uh, that in terms of fit, fitment it shouldn't be too big of a of a deal. Uh, the M5 kit is, is supplied with a pre-terminated harness uh, which I will get out. Um, this is not what you'd sort of consider to be a professional grade motorsport harness. We'll get this under our overhead so we can sort of have a look at it but I mean it is all more than up to the task for what we're going to be doing uh, and you know, this also keeps this, the complexity of uh, fitting the system down. It's going to be much, much simpler than having to weigh everything up ourselves. Uh, other elements that come with this kit, uh, again on, under our overhead, we've got uh, two brake pressure sensors for the front and rear circuits. Uh, obviously that's one of them, but the other one looks just the same, no big surprise. Uh, this one here uh, is a G-sensor, I believe it's G-sensor and your. Uh, so this basically gives the uh, Bosch unit everything it needs to understand and then uh, we also have a, a variable switch as well so uh, we can change the ABS setting. So why are we doing this? Well obviously uh, improving the braking performance of the car is going to be a, a key consideration here. Uh, we have actually partnered here with Bosch Motorsport in Australia though uh, to do some really in-depth testing to show the relative merits of a, of a system like this. And we're coming from the uh, Toyota 86 already having a uh, factory ABS system but you know every element of the car is now so dramatically different to what Toyota uh, were expecting when they calibrated that factory ABS system. Uh, we've got slick tyres, they're bigger in diameter and, and width than the stock tyres. We've got much, much bigger braking packs 
package front and rear. Uh, we've also got aerodynamic downforce that plays in at high speed to the braking capacity of the vehicle. So the factory ABS system does actually do a reasonably stand up job considering how modified the car is. Uh, what I do find though is that it doesn't give a lot of consistency and what I mean by this is that if I do a six or an eight lap race I'm not getting the same braking performance every single time I hit the brake at a specific corner and that's quite uh, disconcerting for the driver. We really need to know that when we hit the brake pedal it's going to respond exactly how we expect it to and we're going to get uh, a consistent feel and a consistent braking performance every time. Now admittedly there's elements, there's a lot of elements that go into this. Uh, obviously we need the brake system to uh, be up to the task in the first place. If we've got a braking system that's not able to cope with the thermal requirements of the vehicle then obviously it doesn't matter what ABS system we're using we're going to have problems but uh, at this point we're well and truly on top of that. The other element with this we're going to be producing a full video about our experience with the car before and after the Bosch ABS installation as well as what's in involved with the ABS installation. We've got so much data on this car to really sort of dive deep into uh, the relative performance benefits and and where the Bosch ABS is really coming to its own. Uh, I'm expecting this solely because the Bosch Motorsport ABS system is kind of uh, the go-to gold standard for um, the majority of factory built race cars. Uh, it's been well proven so I'm not expecting sort of any big surprises but it will be really nice to actually be able to back to back between the stock braking system and the Bosch ABS and see uh, what sort of improvements we are getting there. Uh, now another element that I just wanted to talk about completely away from race cars necessarily at the moment uh, is uh, a car key would you believe. Uh, doesn't sound that exciting but this is something that uh, we ended up getting for a couple of the, the cars that we've sort of got around HPA for course development that we really like and wanted to sort of keep as pristine examples. So uh, this is a product from Form w, Form Works. Uh, this one here if we get under our overhead, this is a key for our FD3S RX7, uh, obviously rotary inspired. Uh, we've also got another one here that I'll just pull out. This is for uh, the FJ40 project that we are currently working on. So I just wanted to show these. I mean, it's, it's not going to be something that would be ideal for every car, but uh, particularly for a, a really uh, sort of heavily developed project car, which both of these cars are for us, uh, I kind of think this is a really nice finishing touch. It's something a little bit unique, uh, it stands out, and uh, it's something that I've personally taken a bit of pride in having these keys. So if you are building up a project car and you are interested in having a look and seeing if uh, Formworks have something available, uh, we'll head across to my laptop screen. Uh, you can find them at uh, formerworks.com and uh, they've got a full range of all of the keys that are that are available. So they cover obviously some of the older vehicles before. Uh, we've got key fobs with immobilizers in them that should probably go without saying. So yeah, nice addition to uh, a project car as a little finishing touch I think. Uh, Lastly, I wanted to also talk about our, one of our latest podcast episodes for the HPA Tuned In podcast that I think will help a lot of people. Uh, we can jump across to my laptop screen. This is hpa-tunedin.com where you can find a full list of our podcasts, but you will also be able to find our podcast pretty much anywhere you already listen to podcasts. This was uh, an interview with uh, Giannis from Plex Tuning in Greece, and Plex Tuning may a number of products but specific to uh, our conversation is their Plex Knock Monitor. They're onto version 3, we've actually got one sitting in the workshop to test. I've used their previous version 1 and version 2 units and it is an absolute game changer. Uh, this dives deep into what knock is, forms of abnormal combustion. We talk about knock, we talk about pre-ignition, they are not the same thing. Uh, we talk about pre-detonation and the fact that that is actually not a thing at all. Uh, and also super knock. So you'll learn about those terms and understand what's actually happening inside the engine. What 
causes knock, what we can do to avoid knock, and then of course how audio knock detection works and how we can use audio knock detection to understand when our engine is suffering from knock. Uh, you understand how a knock sensor operates and where you should ideally locate that knock sensor. So a uh, great episode with Giannis, really appreciate him taking the time out to come on with us. And uh, as well as that, I'd also ask if you are a regular podcast listener or or you just jump on because of um, my say so right now. I'd really appreciate it if you could leave us a rating or a review, rating and a review. These really help us to grow the podcast. Uh, the more ratings and reviews we get, the bigger we can grow the podcast. And this allows us to bring in more high quality guests like Giannis. Uh, as an added bonus, every week we're choosing a random reviewer and we are sending them out a free HPA t shirt, just like the one I'm wearing here. It's absolutely free of charge. We will ship that to your door no matter whereabouts you are in the world. So uh, please, if you could give us a rating and review, we would really, really appreciate it. Uh, just before we finish up, just a reminder, we do have, if I can find where I put it, we do have that Haltech R3 giveaway complete with HPA VIP membership, 25 days left I think it was, uh, absolutely free to get your name in the drawer, there's no hidden catches, we will ship the prize package to your door anywhere in the world regardless, so absolutely no reason not to get into the draw for that, 5000 plus US dollars worth of value. Alright, give me a moment and we'll get started with today's lesson. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.